David Tort Tort commissioned uh, Danny Patty Claire to write a script uh, for a Western different from the Bonanza. Bonanza had people coming to them because they had the money. Chaparral, he wanted them to go and fight the battle of the Indians, the Mexicans, and do all of that. That entirely different concept. And uh, he, Danny Petty Claire, worked it out. Uh, Danny Petty Claire called me at midnight. He says, I finished the script. Do you want a copy? Now the next morning, I'm supposed to fly to Honolulu on a survey for Bonanza. I went down and picked up the script and put it in my mailbox, six o'clock at the airport with Bill Claxton, Buzzy Boggs, uh, NBC representative Fett Coe, and another guy, I can't think of his name. We flew to Honolulu. They were wanted to do a Bonanza on the Parker Ranch. Why, I don't know, but that was in their head. But by the time we got, all of us got to Honolulu, we'd all read the script. And they said, what the hell are we doing here? This was in uh, April. And uh, we did the survey since we were there. Came home and I started weekends. I would go to Arizona looking for locations. I met Bob Hope, uh, Bob, Bob Hope. Bob Shelton, who owned Old Tucson. And uh, he was a great help to me, because he knew other locations, and uh, he was a real sweetheart of a guy. I liked him very much. We got along fine, except uh, he never wanted to consult a problem. So he would hear, I was, he'd hear that I'm coming over with a problem with a studio. I'd get to his office, and. Uh, I'd say, I want to talk to Mr. Shelton. Well, he had to go to town for a meeting. So I nicknamed him Bob Seldom. He was seldom around when you wanted him. So, so. But it's still, you obviously really liked the old Tucson yeah. environment. Well, it, uh, it was decided to put the homestead there. That was partly my decision with him. We picked out, he and I picked out a spot for the reason being, if it's on somebody's private property out of the Thule's, I got no control over it. Kids could get in it, they could ruin it. We needed it to stay as it is. So he gave me this piece of property, a spot of land where we both felt it could work mm -hmm. to our advantage. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did. Mm -hmm. we, we went down uh, with the art director, was the art director on Bonanza, Earl Hedrick. He designed all the sets and the, and the thing, we went down one weekend, and we had uh, uh, plywood on, on, with the backing so they could stand up, so we could see how the sun traveled during the day. So that as the house, what angle the house should be to, to be at our advantage for the sun. Uh, other things, we got started shooting, and all of a sudden we're using arc lights you know, with two carbons coming together. But with the wind and everything, the smoke is coming down onto the set. Well, that didn't work, so we had to build. It wasn't my idea, it was one of the electricians built a, uh, We had a, a funnel this big on each lamp, so the wind would go up. Now, your big lights in those days were three-wheel iron, cast iron things. We're rolling around in the sand. It's taken six guys to move a lamp. Someone invented what they call a clickety-clack. It was like a caterpillar tractor tread. And they would roll around over the sand. And uh, one of the assistant cameramen came to me and he says, I know you're going to be upset with my overtime. But he says, with the wind and uh, everything, I have to clean these cameras every night. So I said, well, last year, last night at doing that, I brought down an assistant to start work in the afternoon and to work at night and do the thing, load the magazines, and get all that done. So the crew's back to its normal. You have to, as you go along, figure out a way to 
spend a buck to save a buck. 